In this video, we'll be focusing on planet optimization. This is a follow on from the specialization video, and we'll be going into more detail and some higher level mechanics in this video. I'm EP Frio, and I'm known for playing the game in weird and challenging ways. These tips always help me out. I'm sponsored by Paradox to bring you this video. Now, let's get into it. Just like I mentioned in the specialization video, population or pops are the key resource to your empire. So, a lot of these tips come from that key principle getting the most out of them. In the last video, you've specialized your planets, but now you need the pops to work the correct jobs to really benefit from them. We can do this by coming over to the population screen in your planet and then expanding out the different categories. Now we can plus or minus the jobs away, shift clicking to reduce to zero or control click for going up or down five. You can also just click on a job to favor it in each category, prioritizing this job to be filled. Now what jobs should we get rid of in general? Unless you're a trade build, you should probably move your clerks elsewhere until there are none left or just before you go below 50% stability. This is because clerks also give amenities which increase your population's happiness on the planet which in turn increases stability. However, stability gives a boost to your resources from jobs, trade value and immigration pull at above 50% or a negative modifier below 50%. This means staying just above 50% stability is usually the most efficient way to gain resources as having pops employed on resource producing jobs is generally better than having pops employed on jobs that would increase stability, especially early on in the game. Once your planet is full of working useful jobs, then you should look at increasing stability, or we can use other ways to do that that doesn't cost as many pops. For example, if you have a spare building slot and your amenities are lacking, you can build a hollow theatre or equivalent. Entertainers produce five times more amenities per job than clerks, meaning you can work more jobs while keeping stability above 50%. Enforcers can also usually be unemployed, as events only happen if crime is at 30 or more. So as long as you're below that, you don't need your enforcers. You just gotta trust your population to not break any crimes. As there are specialists, you may have to wait for them to demote or you just build another specialist job building or district. You can also shift the pops around depending on your empire's needs. Species traits aren't just for the start of the game. Depending on what technologies you've discovered or ascension paths you've gone down, you can customize your pops to really match your specialized planet. For example, in this game, I made pops that were good at science, unity, food, and alloys, but you can take this favor if you really wanted to. I then applied these templates to the planets that were specialized for these needs, giving me a further boost in resources so I can dominate this galaxy. You can also casually mess around with their rights. For example, materialist empires can give academic privileges, which gives 10% more research from jobs. Outside of your planets and population, there are a fair few external mechanics that you can use to enhance your empire's resources. Firstly, above any of your science-producing planets, you can assist research with a science ship and scientists. This gives a 10% boost to all science production with a level 1 scientist, and then increases by 2% per scientist level. The best traits for this is adaptable for more experience gain or resilient for more lifespan to really maximize your scientists' levels. Next are star bases, commonly thought as a defensive measure. But what if I told you they can be great for your economy too? Early on in the game, star bases can be the main source of some key resources for your empire. Once you've researched the early technology hydrophonics farming, you get access to hydrophonics bays. This starbase building produces 10 food a month for an upkeep of just one energy a month. But most importantly, it uses no pops. This means you can shift pops off food jobs or even sell any excess food to get more useful resources like minerals or energy. You may even research zero G refineries and have a starbase in a nebula, which means you can build a nebula refinery, which gives 10 minerals for an upkeep of two energy a month and even one exotic gas a month with the exotic gas extraction tech, all without using your precious pops. If you're playing a gestalt consciousness, you can take this one step further as you get access to solar panels from the start of the game. This module costs 50 alloys to build and produces 6 energy a month, which is an incredibly sweet deal as you're also not using any pops to produce this. If you're not a gestalt, all star bases collect trade in the system they are in and route it back to your capital. So building over your planets is always a good idea. Once you've sorted 
out your choke point. But add on to this, once you've researched the technology the living state, you get access to the deep space black site starbase building. The main use of this is to increase the stability of all planets in the system by 5, but it also gives you 1 unity and 25% system governing ethics traction. This stability basically just gives you a small boost of resources, 400 alloys and no job upkeep. A bargain and another great reason to build your starbases above your planets. All of these make your population more efficient by not needing them to work the equivalent on the planet, bring them up to do other things. Like we covered in the last video, you can also build orbital rings if you have the Overlord DLC. These allow you to further increase production on your specialized planets. Each resource, barring research, can be increased if you have the correct technology and a tier 2 orbital ring, as this allows you to build the buildings. My tip is to match up the building with what your planet is producing, so on an alloy world, build the alloy processing facility. You can also increase the number of districts on your planet by building a habitation module. It's also always useful to check out your policies screen. Just adults can choose to give complex drones more output while decreasing menial drone output or vice versa. Or normal empires can change their economic policy to produce more alloys while producing less consumer goods or vice versa. Depending on your situation, this could be extremely helpful. Finally, the galactic community is always worth paying attention to. You may find some resolutions can greatly help what your empire is trying to accomplish. From more technology, trade, alloys, minerals, and much more. This has been how to optimize your planets. If you enjoyed or learned something new, subscribe.